accounts will come to order. Please note, if you wish to be heard at this meeting, please sign the speaker list provided on, on the table at my right to the side of the chamber. I have reserved the right to limit the amount of each speaker as on an agenda item, and each speaker will have three minutes to speak. With that, we'll all rise for the invocation by Reverend Warren H. Litchfield. Remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance led by Mayor Moe. Almighty God, we gather this evening hour to conduct the business of this city, to offer our prayer for our mayor, for the president, for the members of the city council, and for all in authority. Grant unto each a sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be. We commend this city, this county, this state, this nation, and its people, our armed forces at home and abroad, our law enforcement and fire districts, to thy merciful care and understanding. Remember all those who lie upon a bed of affliction. Comfort those who mourn a loss of loved one. In the name of the one who is Lord of life, we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Agenda item number four, if you call the roll, Ms. Rao. Mr. Ricks. Here. Ms. Nicholas. Here. Ms. Crary. Here. Mr. Smalls. Here. President Lez. Here. Mayor Moe. Here. Agenda item number five, will defer the approval of minutes of the 40th meeting of September 25th, 2017 to the next mayor and city council meeting on Monday, October 23rd, 2017. Move to agenda item number six. Approval of minutes of the work session on October 4th, 2017. They were sent out Ms. by Ms. Rauer. Are there any comments? Mr. President, you want a single motion? Please. I so move. Okay, I have a motion to have a second. Second. Thank you, Ms. Crary. Any further discussion? Call the roll, Ms. Rauer. Mr. Ricks? Aye. Ms. Crary? Yes. Ms. Nicholas? Yes. Mr. Smalls? I vote yes. President Laz? Yes. Uh, we're going to deviate a little bit from the uh, agenda, but not much. At this time, I'm going to call Steve to come to the uh, podium. He'll make an introduction. Thank you, Mr. President, Mayor, and City Council. Uh, it's with great pleasure that uh, I introduce this first gentleman and uh, he's uh, come to us um, via uh, being a friend and a professional colleague for over almost 40 years. I've known Russ, and uh, I asked him to stop down tonight for a very special occasion. As everybody knows in the city, we have been working hard to get every employee trained in the incident command system courses that's required from the federal government. Um, we have accomplished that. Uh, we have trained over 200 employees. Uh, they have the required training, and I believe it's it's the, one of the first entities within the state that I'm aware of who has completed this. So it's a big, big accomplishment. It's because of the mayor and the city council and, and, and Marty and everybody who has pitched in to give me the support to do this. So without further ado, I'm privileged to uh, introduce this gentleman. Like I said, he's been a professional colleague and a friend for years with the Maryland Fire and Rescue Institute uh, as a emergency manager up in Cecil County. And he's been lucky enough, I guess, uh, he'll have to answer that, but he is currently the director of the Maryland Emergency Management Agency. So with that, I'd just like to, to ask Russ to come up just to say a few words, if he could, uh, Mr. Russ Strickland. Thank you for those kind words, uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. President, the members of the council, the employees of the city of Laurel, and then the citizens of the city of Laurel. I uh, first off bring you greetings from the governor, the lieutenant governor, and then also the, the uh, director of the governor's office of Homeland Security, who works hand in hand with me on a day to day basis. This particular topic is very, very close to Homeland Security as well as to emergency management. 
I can't say enough about what you all have accomplished. Uh, I was at the Maryland Emergency <laughs> Management Agency uh, in 2005 when the statewide resolution was made that we would adopt the National Incident Management System and particularly the Incident Command System throughout the state of Maryland. It was basically promulgated to us uh, from the federal government, but then it was upon each and every jurisdiction, political jurisdiction within the state to adopt it locally and then train their employees accordingly. And as Steve has mentioned, you know, he's not quite sure whether or not there's any municipality in the state of Maryland that has 100% trained their employees to the applicable levels of the incident command system. And I gotta tell you, I'm not aware of anybody else in the state of Maryland, particularly at a governmental level, that can stand and say that 100% of their employees are trained the way they should be. And so that, to you, for your leadership, your devotion and dedication to your employees, and for doing the right thing, because if there's one thing we do need in a time of disaster, it's a little bit less chaos and a little bit of organization. And what the incident command system does is it brings that to the events that we're involved with and unfortunately uh, very, very much involved with on a nationwide basis today, but every day in every local community throughout the state of Maryland. So again, on behalf of the Maryland Emergency Management Agency, particularly the Governor's Office of Homeland Security and the Governor, greatly, greatly appreciate what you have accomplished. We recognize you for that, and I'll make sure that uh, we keep spreading the word that Laurel, as far as I'm concerned, and have seen, is the first to have done that in the state of Maryland. So, excellent, excellent, and thank you very, very much. For the thank thank you, Russ. Thanks, Russ. Hey, Russ. Um, Mr. Ronnie Gill, who's the director of the Office of Emergency Management for Prince George's County, he's still, I think, uh, in Puerto Rico, but he did uh, send a letter, and uh, I'd like to read it right now. Uh, to the Honorable Craig A. Moe, Office of the Mayor, City of Laurel, Laurel Municipal Center, Laurel, Maryland. De Dear Mayor Moe, on behalf of the Prince George's County Office of Emergency Management, it is a pleasure to congratulate the City of Laurel employees on its successful completion of the Department of Homeland Security Federal Emergency Management Agency FEMA Incident Command System courses. Thank you for your willingness to improve on competencies to prepare for, protect against, respond to, recover from, and mitigate the potential effects of all types of disasters and emergencies on, in Prince George's County. Your contribution to emergency management is unparalleled. We are grateful for your continued partnership and for making Prince George's County a more prepared and resilient community. Best wishes for a continued success. Sincerely, Ronald E. Gill, Jr., Deputy Director, Office of Emergency Management, Director, Office of Emergency Management, Prince George's County, Maryland. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and if you could, if I'd like to get a picture with, with the council and yourself. Why don't you have Russ, why don't you guys come up here and I'll bring this over here. Move to agenda item number seven, report of the mayor and city council. Tonight I'll start with Mr. Smalls. Thank you, Mr. President, I'll be very brief. 
Uh, I had the opportunity, along with my colleagues on the council, uh, to attend the uh, principal's breakfast. Uh, it's a quarterly event that the mayor uh, puts on. But I think this particular breakfast had uh, a lot more meaning, at least to me, because it was at the Woodland Job Corps uh, Center down, uh, down 198. And um, it was the first time I'd ever been on the campus, uh, so I had no idea. Uh, and certainly no preconceived uh, notion of, of what uh, to expect, but I was very pleasantly surprised uh, at the size of the campus, uh, the programs that, uh, uh, that they have there at, at Woodland, and uh, how professional uh, the students there are. Uh, our, our entire breakfast was prepared from scratch uh, by students, served by students, uh, and, and it was just, just a great experience, aside from the information that was shared among uh, members of the council, the mayor, uh, and our principals, uh, just the experience of being there was, was one that was uh, very satisfying for me. That's my report, Mr. President. Thank you, Ms. Smalls. Ms. Crary. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I think it was the last couple of weeks were one of breakfasts. Uh, I attended the uh, ladies' auxiliary breakfast in addition to what Mr. Smalls has just discussed, and that's the first Sunday of every month. It's a great organization, and it's open to the public, and that's at the Volunteer Fire Department. I also attended the Go Golden Shovel Award over in Wellington on the 27th. It bloomed a little early, but it was a great event. Also, this Saturday is e-cycling and recycling, and that'll be down at Rob's shop at Public Works. That'll start at 8 a.m. and go until noon. Okay, and that will be wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Crary. Thank you. Mr. Ricks. Thanks, sir. Uh, in addition to what's been mentioned already, um, I attended uh, what Ward 1 has been doing, and that is cleaning up Ward 1. We do it on a quarterly basis, and this time we had 19 citizens, three babies, and one dog. And we walked all through the lower part of the city and around, and um, it's sponsored by Kathy Peterson and the other group of citizens that we've recognized here before. And it's a, it's a great thing to do. It's wrong, it, it brings out the citizenship, it also brings out camaraderie and uh, lets the neighbors know neighbors and it, uh, it's very refreshing and so if anyone wants to get involved, I'm available. You can contact me here at City Hall and I'd be more than happy to have you join us. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Ricks. Ms. Nicholas. Thank you. In addition to what's already been said, we attended the Laurel High School Parade. It was a wonderful event. The weather was nice. We had a great time. And we also participated in the Hurricane Harvey donation. It was well attended. I'd like to thank everyone for all of their donations, and I'd like to thank all of the city staff that was involved. That concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Nicholas. <coughs> As you've heard, uh, the council members attend a lot of events outside of mayor and city council meetings, along with the mayor. And um, so I'm not gonna repeat them, but there is, I do wanna mention one thing. Uh, as, as Steve said, the uh, deputy director of uh, emergency management for Prince George's County is down in Puerto Rico. I've got some of my managers are down there, they're trying to get down there. Uh, they've been loaned by various agencies to FEMA because there's not enough project managers uh, to get the people together in groups and get things done. You need to realize that only 15% of the people in Puerto Rico have electric tonight. They hope to have 25% next week. And I'd ask that you say, say a prayer that our legislators do the right thing tomorrow and vote the $5 billion that they need to, to make some improvements down there to a very, very bad situation. Um, they, they're in tough shape. Most of the houses lost their roofs. So again, I'm just gonna mention that because I do in fact have some of my managers down there. They're loaned to them for 90 days and they're having trouble getting to Puerto Rico. Um, that concludes my report, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, <coughs> excuse me, just a, uh, 
I want to offer condolences to Lee Wolf, who's a member of our Department of Park uh, Public Works on the loss of his mother. Uh, also, we did uh, have the City Hall in the park at Emancipation Park. I want to thank those citizens that came out. Uh, that was our last one for the year. Um, I also was uh, invited um, to attend uh, Laurel High School, the class of 1967 for their 50th reunion. It was back at uh, the high school where uh, Principal Jones gave them a tour of what's uh, at the high school there. I think they were the first class that graduated from that um, high school when it was completed. Uh, we had the second annual um, Walk Laurel Day. Uh, that is a, a, an annual event that uh, we do, but also it's done uh, through the governor's office asking others to participate. It's our second year doing that. If we can remind people to get out and take a walk, um, that's what we're attempting to do. It's good for health, it's good for, um, for your body, and we just want to remind um, everyone to um, get out there and walk, and that's what it really is all about on that, uh, that annual event. The uh, principal's breakfast uh, was at Woodland Job Corps. I wanna thank them for uh, hosting. We had roughly about uh, 14 of the principals um, there. I wanna thank city staff as well as the council for attending. This is a quarterly uh, meeting that we exchange information with the principals and the schools um, and the uh, city staff here and, and what's taking place um, in and around the city of Laurel. So uh, was well attended and I wanna thank them for that as well, for hosting. And you heard Councilman uh, Smalls talk about how it was prepared and who served it and all. It's uh, just a great program over at uh, Woodland Job Corps. We did have the uh, Harvey, uh, Hurricane Harvey donation drive at the First Baptist Church as well as Rocky Gorge was one of those that um, was a sponsor as well as the city. I wanna thank them. Um, the First Baptist Church and, and, um, and Rocky Gorge, uh, as well as city staff for participating. Uh, that meant a lot, very proud of the staff that uh, took part in that. Uh, they're always there to uh, participate and help out and that's what it was all about. And um, from 11 to four people came in and out uh, dropping uh, things off at the First Baptist um, Church. The, uh, as you heard, that same day was the uh, Laurel High School Homecoming Parade. And um, I wanna thank them for the invitation to participate in the parade. Uh, tonight we had the My Time uh, with the Mayor at the Park and Recreational Facility. Uh, again, um, again, thanks staff and, and those that came out. A couple of announcements on October the 14th, this Saturday is electronic recycling and paper shredding event at the Department of Public Works from eight until 12. You have to show a uh, city ID that you're a resident here in the city to participate in that. October the 25th is uh, Discover Laurel Day from 9.30 to one where we're uh, gonna be touring around telling people how great it is to be in the city of Laurel and attract uh, people to Laurel. So that's uh, being put on by Christian Pulley and her, her group. So on the 25th of October from 9.30 until one. On October the 26th, it's the Main Street uh, Trick or Treat from six until eight. That's put on by the uh, Board of Trade. That's on October the 26th. Uh, we are doing some, again, some secure or some uh, safety enhancements, some parts of the road of Main Street will be closed again. I um, want everybody to be aware that there's still traffic out. There are a lot of people on the street that night, so uh, if you come out from six till eight, uh, make sure you got the right colors on or a flashlight so that you can be seen. Um, and just uh, take your time, there'll be plenty of candy for everybody. October the 28th is the Halloween Spooktacular at um, Cypress Street. Yeah, that's at 2 p.m. That's inside. If you're not there by two o'clock, uh, they start without you. So you gotta be there by two. Great event put on our by our Department of Park and Recs. And uh, that same day in the evening from six until nine will be the Harvest Moon Hayride at Riverfront. If you've never done that, I encourage you to do that. You need to go to Main Street and Route 1, correct, Joanne? To pick up, to get on the Hayride. Um, they have bonfire and everything down at the uh, Riverfront Park, but just a really a good time. So that same evening, the 28th from six until nine. And on October the 31st, we've designated uh, citywide Halloween for trick-or-treating from six till eight in the city of Laurel. 
Uh, Mr. President, I have a couple of proclamations that I need to step down in front and do. All right, Mayor. We have, a, have a proclamation to read, which is 2017-13, uh, whereas Community Media Day is an annual celebration of voices that brings awareness to the importance of free speech and accessible um, accessibility to media for all individuals. And whereas access to information, whereas access to information in today's media environment is critical for the healthy functioning of our community by connecting local government community organizations, schools, and citizens, and whereas community, community media organizations provide a means for diverse communities to tell their stories, hear each other's so other stories, and to create new stories together using social media and television programming, and whereas Laurel TV provides a diverse and, a valu and valuable programming on public education education and government access channels, and whereas citizens benefit by the use of community media content to stay aware, stay aware, and to be involved in our community. Now, therefore, I, Craig M. O., the mayor of the city of law, do hereby proclaim October the 20th, 2017, as Community Media Day in the city of Laurel, and hereby call upon the citizens to promote and appreciate the importance of community media at Laurel TV and the programming available on Comcast channels 996 and 71. She was gonna make me get that in no matter what. That's, and Verizon channel 12. And let me just say, I wanna thank Audrey, Department of Communications, her staff and the volunteers. So Audrey, why don't you come on up, Bella. Good. <coughs> I just want to say that uh, our entire Laurel TV staff is actually in the building tonight. Um, communications Director Joyce uh, Jackson, my assistant communications director, is here. Um, Kareen Kobeck behind the iPad there. She is our public information and social media specialist. And then back in the control room, all my auxiliaries are here, here tonight. I have Darnell Butler, Jan Moss, I have Keisha Butts back there. Also, our production manager, uh, Keston Dakoto is here, as well as our technical director, Ed Thomas. So these are the people that get all of this fantastic programming on the air. Um, we're celebrating Community Media Day nationwide on October 20th, and Laurel TV is really the best of the best when it comes to community, community media. So we've invited some of the people in the community that have really helped us make this dream come true. Um, one of those is Laurel resident, Jackie Jones. Jackie came to us last year with an idea for a diabetes special for Diabetes Awareness Month. That special that we put together included our first call-in show on Laurel TV, and it also went on to become an award-winning production. It won an international telly award out of 13,000 entries. Um, that uh, diabetes special was uh, selected for a telly award. And even more importantly, since we're talking about Community Media Day, that special won a hometown media award. So tonight, uh, Mayor Mo, Jackie Jones is going home with her very own hometown media award. Jackie. Jack 
Jackie, I just have a citation for you as well, but I can pull a lot more. Come on, Jackie. I hadn't prepared words, but this means so much to me. It means a lot for diabetes awareness. I don't do what I do for recognition. I do it for people uh, to promote diabetes awareness. So the fact that the TV special won a couple of awards, awards that meant that we get the reward because many, many people benefited from that. So let's pray that um, we do all we can to get diabetes awareness out there. So thank you so much. So, so before Jackie leaves, because she sent me an email yesterday to remind me, because I know she thought I forgot, you, right, Joanne? Jack, when you Jackie went around and or Jackie got the course that we do in the city certified. So you'll see um, signs up on the, the path that they take. I don't run it, I just walk half of it, quite <laughs> frankly, that's what I do. And uh, they are on blue poles. That was all Jackie's idea. She wanted to make sure we have a map somewhere so that people can see it. And she thought I forgot about it because she sent me an email and sent me that map. And Joanne now has it, we didn't forget. But I wanted to acknowledge that was all Jackie's idea. That's very important for runners to have a certified course. And, um, but I wanted to acknowledge Jackie. She does, as you heard, she does a lot. She doesn't worry about getting credit. She just wants to get things done. So that's what we like. So congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And may I say that the map will have a barcode. So you can take your smartphone and you can scan it and the map will come up so you can see the map as you walk. So we're very excited. Thank you. Congratulations, Jackie. Um, and since we're talking about community media, the other group that we wanted to recognize is athletes serving athletes. David Slomkowski spent many days, grew up at the Laurel Boys and Gr Girls Club here in Laurel. And then he had a mission to compete in competitions around the country with other athletes like James Banks, who's with us tonight, who's a big part, love, love that smile, James, a big part of athletes serving athletes. And the story that Joyce Jackson produced on athletes serving athlete won Laurel TV its highest honor that we have received to date. It won a silver telly award um, out of um, from uh, entries from all five continents, 13,000 entries across the country, and athletes serving athletes. Um, the community media that we produced here in Laurel won that award. So I want to bring uh, David Slomkowski, the founder of Athletes Serving Athletes, and James to come, to come here as well, because not only did it win a Silver Telly Award, the story also won a hometown media award, a nationwide award, competing against the very best in the business, CNN, all the big boys, and um, the Laurel Hometown Media Award for Athletes Serving Athletes. And while everybody's coming up, I want to let the audience know that if you can see these stories in their entirety by going to the Laurel TV official YouTube channel, all of the stories that we do produce for Laurel TV are on that Laurel TV channel. You can see them anytime, anywhere. Also, um, another good thing to do is go on laureltv.org, see our programming, and check out what we're producing for you. Already this year, we've um, produced 125 videos, and we're still going strong. So. My name is Kevin McNulty. I am a local Laurel businessman. Um, that's what I do during the day. I work for Miss Sue Frost. Um, 
In my spare time, I am the vice president of the board of directors for Athletes Serving Athletes. Um, and what Athletes Serving Athletes does is that we take uh, young people and um, some of them can't compete on their own, but they really need to compete with others. And so we encourage <coughs> people that are able or more able to help them out and we do everything from 5Ks to triathlons and what I really wanted to come up here and tell you is on the 10th anniversary Dave and James were our original team and on our 10th anniversary to celebrate James and David ran a full Ironman that is a full swim a full marathon and a full 152 bike 112, like <laughs> consecutively. <laughs> they did, if I may add, because we compete in mainstream events, we have to compete on everyone else's schedule for you know all, all athletes. And so after the second phase, we didn't quite make the mark. And so it was the, the, the final is the marathon. And so our score really wouldn't count as far as an official score. David looked at James and said, you wanna go anyway? And James looked at him and said, oh yeah, they go. And they ran and they competed the entire race and they were celebrated, they completed the whole race. Thank you. So this is the kind of things that we're producing here at Laurel TV. We want to encourage the public, send us your story ideas, help us share the story of people like James and David and Jackie Jones. It's all what community media is all about. Info at laureltv.org. Dave, would you like to say a couple words? Thank you for this uh, incredible honor. <laughs> Driving in here, it was like a stroll down memory lane. I was telling Miss Renee that I feel so blessed to grow up in this town. I don't live here anymore, but I spent more than 25 years here. And um, playing, you know, having great parents that provide opportunities to play Little League Baseball and football for Laurel Boys and Girls Club really um, was a huge influence 11 years ago when this vision to start Athletes Serving Athletes came. And I was at this crossroads and I would think of all the old coaches I had and how much time they put in and what a positive influence they had in my life. And I would always think, wow, who, I wanna live that life that I could have that positive influence in someone else's life. So I met James and as everyone could imagine, he's brought more joy into my life than I could ever imagine putting into his life. And now we have close to 200 other athletes like James competing alongside uh, over 400, we call them wingman, men, women, um, who get the, the, the real inspiration and joy out of it. So it's just, a, athletics has always been a, a wonderful uh, a manner to break down barriers and bring people together. And Lord knows we need that everywhere, <laughs> not just tomorrow. So thank you for the time and uh, it's an honor. And, and now, on, on behalf of our entire staff, we wanna thank you and the entire Laurel City Council for your support for Laurel TV. We could not do it if you didn't allow us to build that beautiful studio and staff it with some really talented people and give us free reign to do all these wonderful stories that we, we produce for Laurel TV. So thank you very much thank for your support. Thank you. Thank you so, so listen, before you leave, I can envision using Jackie's certified area to run, hitting Laurel Lake for the swim, <laughs> and, and biking it at the top of the hill into the city of Law. So come see us. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Move to uh, agenda item number eight, general public hearing. I'll open the general public hearing at 7.33. I have no one signed up to speak. Is there anyone wishing to speak? Come forward, sir. State your name and address for the record. State your name and address for the record. I turned that mic off. Hit yeah, the, you just have to hit the button. Until it'll, it'll go goes, green. At the bottom. There you go, you're on. Um, 
It doesn't come out. It'll just put the very top towards you. It'll, it'll pick the directional. There you go. Uh, Gabriel Jinimbot is my name. I live literally uh, probably 100 feet from here. Uh, and I've been here for 14 years. But this is my first time coming to this uh, council meeting. And uh, I've been very impressed with the report um, from the council members. And I wanted to say that um, it, I would like to participate more in anything to grow up Laurel. I live here, but I've worked for Baltimore City government for 15 years. And um, I want to, uh, we run the IT uh, department for the entire city. But I want to do more for Laurel in terms of IT, in terms of project management. And I want to offer my service to anyone that needs help in anything. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. So w somebody's going to get your name and address and uh, your phone number? Yes. Gabriel, again, is my first name, and Jinimbot is my last name. I'll spell it out. N-J-I-N-I-M-B-O-T. And uh, my address is 15623 Birch Run Terrace. And this is in Laurel. You're across the street in the townhouses. Yes. Yes, okay. I got it. I know where we got it. We got, got it. it. I see him. I know where he's at. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. And you'll get a call from somebody. Sir. Sure. Probably yeah. the mayor. No problem. Okay. <laughs> and and um, thank you, sir. My phone number? Yes, please. 240-602-5229. You get it, Kim? I did. Okay. Thank you. Somebody will call you, and we really appreciate no your offer to help us. Thank you. Anything we can get, any volunteer we can get, we like. All right. All right. You got me. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wishing to speak? Seeing no one, I'll close the general public hearing at 7.36. I'm gonna take an agenda item out of order. I'm gonna to move to agenda item number 12. Introduction and first public hearing on ordinance number 1922, an ordinance to amend certain project budgets in the FY 2018-2023 capital improvement program. I've read the title into the record for the first reading. Michelle. Mr. President, we discussed this ordinance at the work session last week. Um, we are taking previously approved funding um, through ordinance 1918 in the FY17 operating budget. Um, we're using that to provide additional funding to the information technology project um, for additional emergency operations center upgrades, major facility maintenance at the Laurel Municipal Pool, to advance the white coating of the main pool for this coming um, season. Major facility maintenance here at the Laurel Municipal Center. There was um, additional caulking necessary in the painting, the exterior painting project. So um, since our discussion on attachment one, there's an additional $5,000 in that line item <coughs> for the project. The um, appropriation of the $20,000 donation from the uh, American Legion Post 60 um, for additional funds as well as the operating budget funds um, to complete the memorial installations in the front um, of the Law Municipal Center. <clears throat> the right-of-way site improvements which are to um, complete the Welcome to Laurel sign and um, the hazard mitigation project, as well as uh, funding for fleet acquisition that was earmarked from Ordinance 1918 as well. Thank you, Michelle. I'll open the public hearing at 738. I have no one signed up to speak. Is there anyone wishing to speak? Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing at 738 and a half. I'll entertain a motion to suspend the rules. Mr. President. Mr. Ricks. I do so move. You have a motion to suspend, I have a second. Second. Thank you, Ms. Crary. Call the roll, Ms. Rao. Mr. Ricks. Aye. Ms. Crary. Yes. Ms. Nicholas. Yes. Mr. Smalls. I vote yes. President Lowe. Yes. I'll now entertain a motion on ordinance number 1922. Mr. President, so move. 
Thank you, Mr. Ricks. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Crary. Any discussion? Roll roll, Ms. Rowe. Mr. Ricks? Aye. Ms. Crary? Yes. Ms. Nicholas? Yes. Mr. Smalls? I vote yes. President Laz? Yes. Mayor Mao? I'm gonna concur and I'm gonna just ask those individuals, especially because I know it's election time for those that wanna continue to give inaccurate information. We put a lot of money into infrastructure in the city of Laurel. And again, we are doing that again tonight with some mon extra money and some reauthorization. So I'd encourage them to get a look at our CIP. I'll concur. Thank you, Mayor. Move to agenda item number nine. Consideration of a recommendation to award a contract for telecommunications no, fiber construction there. to Fiber Plus Inc. of Jessup, Maryland. Kevin, you have the floor. Give me, Mr. President, Mayor, Council Members. Before you is a recommendation to award a contract for the installation of telecommunications subsurface fiber to Fiber Plus Incorporated of Jessup, Maryland. This was discussed at the uh, work session. This fiber will run between the armory on 5th Street to the police straight station uh, straight down 5th Street. Um, funding is in the current CIP and the contract is under the state of Maryland. It's recommended the council approve the Fiber Plus Incorporated State of Maryland contract price of $64,849.64. Thank you, Mr. Frost. As was indicated, it was discussed at the October 4th work session. What's the pleasure of the council? Mr. President, I move for approval of, um, sorry, of the recommendation to award a contract for telecommunications fiber construction to Fiber Plus. Thank you, Mr. Second. Small. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Ricks. Any further discussion? Call roll, Ms. Rao. Mr. Smalls? I vote yes. Mr. Ricks? Yes. Ms. Nicholas? Yes. Ms. Prairie? Yes. President Lowe? Yes. We'll move to agenda item number 10. Introduction, first public hearing on ordinance number 1920, an ordinance to amend the City of Laurel Police Retirement Plan as it relates to dis distributions below the limit set forth in code section 411 a in a bucket, 11 in a bucket, A in a bucket. I've read the title and the record for the first reading. I will open the public hearing at uh, 7.42. I have no one signed up to speak. Is there anyone wishing to speak? Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing at 7.42 and a half. The second public hearing with possible action will be on the Mayor and City Council agenda for Monday, May, October 23rd, 2017 at 7 p.m. Move to agenda item number 11. Introduction, first public hearing on ordinance number 1921, an ordinance number, an ordinance to amend the City of Laurel Employee Retirement Plan as it relates to distributions below the limit set forth in code section 411, A in a bucket, 11 in a bucket, A in a bucket. I read the title into the record for the first reading. I'll open the public hearing at 7.42. I have no one signed up to speak. Is there anyone wishing to speak? Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing at 7.43. Second public hearing with possible action at the Mayor and City Council meeting on Monday, October 23rd, 2017 at 7 p.m. Move to agenda item number 13, consideration of a recommendation for the purchase of one refuse truck and one bucket truck. Rob, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, yes, as uh, discussed at the work session, Public Works had put together a recommendation to buy a, a refuse truck and an aerial bucket truck. Grand Turk Equipment out of Baltimore had a contract with National Joint Powers uh, for a Freightliner refuge truck, and the state of Maryland has a contract out with Apple Ford for the aerial bucket truck. Funding for these are, is in the fleet replacement program with the cost of the refuge packer at $171,084 and the bucket truck at $102,590. So it's recommended we purchase these two pieces of equipment for $273,674. Robin, just to restate the uh, 
we're going to retire the oldest refuse truck we have. Is that correct? That's correct. All right, so that'll go to surplus sale or something. Yes. Okay. This was discussed at the October 4th work session. What's the pleasure of the council? Mr. President. Ms. Crary. I recommend that we uh, approve the fleet acquisition as set forth by Mr. Fury for the uh, purchase of one refuse truck and one bucket truck. Thank you, Ms. Crary. Do I have a second? I do. Thank you, Mr. Ricks. Any discussion? Call the roll, Ms. Rao. Ms. Crary? Yes. Mr. Ricks? Yes. Ms. Nicholas? Yes. Mr. Smalls? I vote yes. President Laz? Yes. Is there anything to come before the council? <coughs> Meetings adjourned. Hey, Rob. Rob.